Informative Weekly, let's go. We're gonna be talking about photos today. Photos are a little controversial because we think of these as stock photos and they are, but they are really essential to showing the human experience by using people on your website or showing branded elements or brand colors, they can add a lot of richness to a website and show the real versus a website that's just graphics and patterns. Nothing wrong with the website or, or social media or anything that's just logo and colors and graphics and patterns. But on my website, I like to show diversity and that I work with a wide variety of people, or I like to show physical items, like maybe a desk with pens and a keyboard because that's what I do, or business card layout mock-up things. So today I'm gonna to be showing you a couple of quick tips up top because it's Canva Tip Weekly, and then I'm gonna be doing a deeper dive into the what, who, was it, what's its, who's its, why's its behind the scenes. So first of all, where are photos? In Canva, we're gonna scoot over here, on your left side rail, we've got a whole tab called photos. But Olivia, if I click on elements, there's also photos right here. What's the difference? There isn't any. Canva just decided that elements was going to be the hub for everything. So there's a separate tab in Canva for videos, for audio, for photos. But for some reason, they're all right here as well. What have you? This is all brand new to me also. These are new. Huh. Wow, we have some new collections. That is exciting. Look at these. Wow, okay. New video upcoming. Okay. Um, so photos, what we're talking about today. So the first thing, photos right here. I'm a big fan of the trending photos. Canva's doing a great job of curating these. I don't think they're actually trending. I think it's Canva curating them. I think they're awesome. I really love this blurry flower. Um, let's scroll down and look at a few more. I really love these blurry flowers. I would bet a million dollars that these are both from the same artist. Let's see. Oh, to tell photo details, there's two ways to look at the details behind something. And I covered this in the graphics Canva Tip Weekly, but let's do it in the photos as well. There's two ways. Either you can hover over the image and see <laughs> my face um, and see everything. Who was the artist that made it, the hashtag, the tags that went into it. You can star it, report it if it's profane or spam or bad, um, you can add it to a folder or view the whole collection. Now, not everything has this view collection. It just depends on if Canva grouped it. So, um, or you can click on the image and then the info tab is right up here. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna click info. And this is from Julia Pomodoro from Coralens. That means that that artist contributed to something called Coralens. So who, I don't know what Coralens is. Um, so now I'm going to click on the other one and see if I want a million dollars. I did. I did. Comment below what I should do with my, my millions. Um, so here are the tags. You'll see there's not view collection here because these aren't a part of a collection, but I can click see more like this. It's going to bring me to the, the tags. Um, I don't love any of these. These aren't quite what I wanted. So that was kind of a, a bust. So we're going to come back over here to photos. This time I'm going to click View More by Julia Pomodoro from Cora Lens. Now this isn't just showing Julia's, this is showing everything that was contributed to this creative house. Cora Lens, Cora Lens, I, I don't know. I love photos like this, I love diversity, we're showing different body types, different races, different heights, weights, shapes, sizes, so that's really important when designing and doing um, items for web. But you can see all of these have the same sort of warm color filter to them. There's a lot of great diversity. We're showing a lot of different types of people. I love, I think Canva is very good at that. There's not a lot of great sites that do like Unsplash. I'll teach you guys this. Unsplash is like the big name and free stock photography, but I don't think they do have as good of a job of diversity as Canva does, but I digress. So that's how you're gonna search photos. Another quick tip is that you can search photos by cutouts. Okay, it keeps spitting me out on elements. By cutouts. So let's say I wanted, there's a little tab right here, cutouts only. Let's say I wanted to have some stamps. I love stamps, who doesn't love stamps? Let's be pen pals. All of these are already cut out, which is awesome. Um, maybe I want a keyboard that's cut out. Oops, not keyboard, keyboard. 
Yep, there's all kind of little things where you can make collages over so you can search that. You can also search by color. So I'm gonna click clear all and you can search by color. Now, for some reason, your brand colors aren't here. It's just these basic colors, probably because these are the basic colors that images are tagged with. That makes sense to me where Canva can't possibly tag an image with every single hex color, but they can tag it with these. But you can also come over here. I'm gonna grab my emerald green, copy, copy, copy. And then I'm going to um, exit out of the keyboard situation, the keyboard tag, click on the, the three, the sliders, filters, hit the plus sign, come over here and apply. And it's only going to give me, well, my green's a little bit of a bluish green. So it's only going to give me photos that are kind of in that same color palette. Yeah, my green's a little bit blue. So what I'm gonna do actually is kind of bring this slider over here to the more green section and I bet it's gonna give me what I want. Yeah, greens. So I might type in desk, for example, to see, and look at that. Oh, that's a great image. Oh, what? I'm gonna hit the plus sign here. That is an awesome image. I love that because I could put text on the side. It's in my brand color. It's got a phone I could put like a logo in. Watch this. I'm gonna stick this right here. Look at that. This is great. What a wonderful tool. Love that. So be sure to curate that. Next tip is to make sure that if you do like something, add it to a folder. I'm gonna get you guys, add it to a folder, make it a habit. If you see something you like, if you design something, come up here to the little info, add to folder, your projects. For me, it's Let's Go Brand. And I have a folder called Approved Stock Photos. Add to folder. Easy as that. Now I've got these great items here. But Olivia, where would I use these things? Why do, why do I need photos to add to my brand? I'll show you a few places and then I'll end with a Squarespace tip. The main places that I use photos, number one, is in backgrounds and on my website. I like to show actual real items. Um, you don't have to. I've done a lot of websites that are just patterns and graphics and headshots. I like to show funky stuff. So I actually had these custom done for me, but you can imagine how this is like a stock photo. Um, it's not, it's custom done, but you could imagine curating that. I like to show real brand boards on real items. I like to show actual stuff. I like to show people. I like to really get in there and have it be um, specific. And then the other thing that I like to do is for blog thumbnails or workbooks, lead magnets, all of these thumbnails are really interesting and rich. I'll probably use this as a thumbnail. It's so great. Um, nobody really looks at this. My blog is more for Google, um, which I will cover maybe someday. It's not really a Canva related thing, but um, these are for SEO mostly, but I like to have them here. So as you scroll, you're really getting a good idea. I know these are messed up, but you're getting a good idea of my color palette and, and scheme. Okay. Oh, you can also use items as your banner background. So let's say you do find a terrazzo pattern or a marble. Don't forget the photos can also be used to find branded elements. So let me come down over here, go back to photos. Maybe your brand has a lot of shadows in it. Type in, <laughs> first clear the color. <laughs> Type in shadows. You're gonna get all these trendy shadows. These are so trendy right now. You might also try like gold. What kind of gold stuff is there? Look at this one. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You might try like a marble. There's all kind of brand items. So start typing in your brand keywords here and see what shows up. So let's try confetti. Eh. Huh, that's terrazzo, that's not confetti. Uh, but there's, there's great stuff. But now how do I make that a background on let's say Squarespace? Now, the first thing that you need to know about is that, yes, it's fun to add background, background images. Be aware of how they crop on mobile. So um, let's actually do this in my website <laughs> so I don't have to scrunch my screen. So on my homepage, you're gonna see um, when I scroll down, I have this section here, which has this big image. I love it, it's got lots of colors. It looks really workshoppy. When I come over here to the top right and click mobile view, notice how the photo didn't get smaller, it got cropped. 
cropped, crop rude, right? That is why in web design, you see a lot of people not do those full blade images as much. Um, like for example, this section where it's like a picture of me next to some text, that's because on mobile, it's gonna stack like this and look really nice. Awesome. But for this, it's like the desk is more of a texture. Now, if you want something like this, here's my recommendation um, of a size. So you're gonna click create a design, custom size, I already did this video once and had to re-record it. Um, I like 2000 by 1200. Um, yeah, 2000 by 1000. Some web designers do like 1500 by 1000 and kind of play around with what works for your brand, but you're gonna want that for a banner image. I'm gonna click create new design. Um, I'm gonna come over here to photos and I'm gonna come over here to recently used cause there was one that I really liked. Boop, boop. And then I'm going to, first I'm gonna edit the image. It's a little beige. So I'm gonna click edit image. I'm gonna do specific photo editing in another video. Um, we're gonna make this more pink, like my brand, right? More pink. There we go. I'm gonna up the contrast, up the brightness a little bit, up the saturation. Yeah, that's looking kind of pink. Right click, set images background. I think this is really cute and it will crop really well because it's leaving space right here. You would then, you would then do website graphic, click download, download, save it to your computer and save it someplace where you know where it is. Biggest question that I get is where did my graphic go? Well, you, you saved it somewhere. Um, I'm gonna save it on my desktop for right now. Save, save gonna come over here and show you guys. Gonna click edit, uh, edit section, background, delete, upload that image, desktop, go find website graphic that I just saved and show you guys what happens. While you wait, you hydrate. And ta-da, so obviously it doesn't look exactly like that photo because it's being stretched out, it's being proportionized to fit within this item. But when I click on mobile view, you're gonna see here that it's cropped and it's only showing me a little bit of the image. So I just wanted to cover that as well. All right, so that's been a little overview about photos in Canva. I didn't wanna make this video too long and I wanted to pepper it with these tips. But next week, we're gonna be going into photo effects. What things can you do to a photo? How do I edit it? We're gonna be talking all photo editing, so be sure to tune in next week. Please comment below or respond to the newsletter email with things that you're hoping to learn in Canva. It will help me shape the direction of these videos. All right, guys, see you next week.